So the much hyped and hotly anticipated Lenovo Legion Go PC handheld releases in literally just a few short days on October 31st. And it is our tech hero and legend, ETA Prime, who's given us the closest look yet at the Go in his recent preview. Here are the top eight fascinating key takeaways of the Go in his incredible hands-on, including some details that no other preview has shown us, and also what date the review embargo actually is. So let's dive straight in and in other previews, the FPS built-in stand that the right controller sits in looked a little flimsy to me. However, ET Prime highlighted this. By the way, this magnetically attaches to the controller, and now we can use the right hand joystick or the right hand controller as a mouse. So with ETA confirming that the right stick does actually attach magnetically to the dock holder to ensure it remains securely in place is really good to know. Next is the finish of the Go. There was a great preview by Tech Jammo, link in the description, but he did note how the Go seems to have a cheap, plasticky feel and glossy finish, which collected many fingerprints on his demo unit. I could be wrong, but it appears the Go in ETA Prime's preview was much more matte black, which would make it much less prone to annoying fingerprint marks, and it does look so much more sleek, another massive plus. The third thing that really surprised me, and I don't think that we've seen this in other previews, is that the Legion Space app within the Go contains a storefront where we can buy games. Obviously, we all know that the reason why the Steam Deck is able to be sold at such a low cost is due to the fact that Valve can recoup money back through sales from their incredible Steam store. So it does make total sense that Lenovo may too be able to generate some valuable income through their game storefront too. Next is the ergonomics of the Go. Now in other previews, one of the potential drawbacks that other YouTubers have commented on is just how bulky the Go actually is. However, seeing such an up-close look at the rear of the controller in ETA Prime's preview really brought home to me just how contoured and ergonomic these Go controllers actually may be. And this is particularly important for gamers similar to me who do have larger hands and for example, can't play the Switch for more than 20 minutes before getting extreme hand cramps from the diminutive Joy-Cons. At number 5 is the D-Pad, and other YouTubers like the legend that is Dave2D noted how this is one area of the go that they weren't personally very fond of. ETA confirmed, again the first to do so I believe, is that the D-Pad on the go uses dome switches, not a conductive pad that many people seem to prefer. ETA stated there's not a lot of give in the D-pad, but let's remember that this is a pre-release model of the Go, so let's really hope that the final retail version does have a D-pad that will make many of us happy. FPS mode may somewhat be divisive, but no one can deny the innovative approach that Lenovo have taken with this that truly is unique and unlike anything else on any PC gaming handheld that we've seen so far. And ETA really sold it to us to at least try it out and have a go, noting that it works better than he thought it actually would, and that the most important thing being that it's really fun to use. I personally at first thought it was a bit gimmicky, but seeing ETA speak so highly of how fun and intuitive it really is, I now want to really spend some quality time in this mode of gaming. A feature of the removable controllers that ETA confirmed and seems to be the very first YouTuber to do so is this. Got the main Bluetooth that we would use for Windows, let's say connecting a Bluetooth speaker or a mouse to it, disconnected or turned off right now, and the controllers still connect to the Legion Go. So it does look like they're using a separate chip here to keep connection to the detachable controllers. This is fascinating as it now appears that the detachable controllers use a different Bluetooth chip to the main one used on the Go to connect things like speakers and a mouse. Again, this makes perfect sense as if you're traveling on a plane in airplane mode, for example, you can still detach and use the separate controllers. 
And finally, there's been a lot of speculation on the review embargo date, with many of us assuming it was October 24th, a full week before release date. However, ETA said that he's not able to release any benchmark tests until October 31st, which is the launch date of the Go. So this pretty much confirming that all the reviews of the Go will pour in on release day. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss out on all of the analysis and breakdown of the reviews right here on the channel to see if the Legion Go truly does live up to the hype. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Go, like can you see yourself playing Forza Motorsport, Mario Kart or Spider-Man 2 with Chucky Remote Play using the Legion glasses? So have you pre-ordered the Go like one of our great viewers David8239? Or are you waiting to see what the reviewers say like Dan Future 4409 Let us know in the comments. And as a little extra bonus for watching right to the end of the video, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Remember, when you forgive, you heal. And when you let go, you grow. Life is just too short to harbor bitterness, unforgiveness, and resentment to those that have hurt us. So just let it all go and stay encouraged today, guys. And check this video out if you want to see more hands-on key takeaways of the Legion Go. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.